The Wrestling Mayhem Show. Since 2006, the pioneer in pro wrestling podcasting. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. The Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 927 Tuesdays. We've been talking about professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Segatron in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, where we do, uh, uh, promote podcasts and uh, sometimes operate as a uh, wayward kennel uh, for lost dogs. So uh, this is the podcast this Tuesday night that is not going to be co-hosted by a dog. Uh, that was the awesome cast. Uh, for that story, you can check out the awesome cast Patreon or my social media account, apparently. Uh, but anyways, we do have the most loyal of friends. The Riz is with us on the show this week. I am very dog-like. <laughs> yes, yes. Sometimes uh, you give the puppy dog eyes. Sometimes mm-hmm. you piss on I like, the floor. I like head scratches. Yes. Sometimes I just um, I can lure you with pepperoni and pizza crust. Yes, that's also very true. Yes, you can yes. lure me with food. Mm-hmm. Food is all. Food always works. Yes. Also, Riz plays games. Is where you do things. Yes, it is where I do things. And you'll be hanging. Yes. I play games. Yes, and also, 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 I should mention this more because we we, we allude to this oh, yeah. in the show, but but also Riz has has taken uh, several I've, roles in production. In professional wrestling with yeah. us lately, because everybody, I drag everybody in, baby. Sword <laughs> doesn't. The sword doesn't stop. I've just been cr- quietly bringing people into production that are in my in my um in my uh, uh what do you call it the when the, the planet rolls around in my <laughs> in my gravity in my rotation yeah, yeah, in, my, in my orbit the word, the in my was... orbit. Uh, yeah, I bring in them orbit. in and it says, would you like it's to hold a Sorgatron, camera? Would you like it's to push the Sorgatron some? Vortex. It is the, the Sorgatron Vortex, if you will. It very much is, Hi guys. is the case. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, <laughs> so, welcome. Welcome to my learning tree. Um, anyways. I mean, I, I, I switched a show one day. You did switch a show. You were That's the director weird. of a show. So, that is... Maybe I don't think it was a full show. It was just like one match. Yeah, it's like, hey, take care of this. We have to fix something. Yeah. Also, with us, somebody else who's been doing some backstage media, but just made his debut actually. I think last month or the Rumble, if I'm not mistaken. Timothy Titan is with us. I mean, I've had better moments than in that Rumble. So, I mean, thank you very much for having me here, though. So, I got appreciate it. No, happy to have you on. Uh, uh, you know, for background, Titan is somebody I've known from um, uh, an ill fated promotion back in the day, actually. I, I refer to it as the Voldemort of Pittsburgh Wrestling. Yeah, so. yeah, basically, basically that thing in the in the place where we don't talk about it. Uh, yep. You know, so I mean, I, we got a couple of those on the list <laughs> these days. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's... but we shared one. We shared one of the places with no names. We did. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Many moons ago. But now you are representing, uh, uh, again, working backstage, working media with uh, RWA Sports, uh, and, you know, uh, and we'll talk a bit about that. And, of course, RWA has got a big show coming up this week with Rhino is on it against J-Rock, um, and we'll be doing that on IndieWrestling.us as usual. And uh, and we'll be talking about all kinds of wrestling stuff and have some fun. Uh, and just a little, we'll talk about AEW, we'll talk about WWE, it was the latest with everything there. And uh, I did watch the new Bob Tista movie. Uh, Colors game, and it was a blast yesterday to watch that thing. So a nice thing to uh, decompress after a week of traveling, thankfully. So uh, I've but, been looking for somebody that saw that. So I'm glad you see it. I'm yeah. curious to hear your opinion because I've been wondering if I should see it or not. Is yeah, definitely recommend. Uh, okay. We'll get more into that and, and maybe just talk kind of wrestling movies in general here in a moment. But in the meantime, uh, uh, WWE is going through a little bit of a a series reset. SmackDown just re-debuted, premiered on USA Network, I guess. Uh, if you I'm glad say. I wasn't the only person confused by that. I, w- w- which part of it? What was the confusing part for you? Um, I think the whole Triple H thing, like I, because they didn't change networks or anything, right? Like, like mm. I don't understand the re-debut. I guess. Well, 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 way well, to put it. well, SmackDown was on Fox until last week. Okay, so they were okay. they were over on Fox for a few years. See, I'm a Hulu watcher, so I don't, I, oh. I don't actually know what network anything You're like, are. I don't know. It just comes to me. You Didn't <laughs> yeah, you yeah. notice all the college football ads and everything on Fox that they were in it, FS1 they were talking about? It's, it's either college football ads or gambling sites. They really well, want you to gamble yeah. nowadays, I've learned. Oh, they're all gambling sites now. It's crazy. 
So mm -hmm. I actually love the international feed. Um, you'll hear Excalibur go to uh, throw to throw to a DraftKings commercial. Let's hear from our friends at Draft DraftKings, and I just go to black. I'm like, oh yeah, cool. Moving on. <laughs> so uh -huh. it's good, good. Um, but anyways, no, uh, glad you're here with us, and uh, we'll talk a little bit. You know, wait, I already did that part. Um, Smack anyway, SmackDown was Friday. They had their re debut uh, on USA. USA is going nuts because they have about two or three weeks where they have all three programs on their network. So they're like, oh, look at. Wow. Us. We got all the WWE. Mm -hmm. -doo -doo. That started with a week, didn't it? Like last year, it yeah. was just one week. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, no, no. Well, last year they they did a bunch of stuff, but I think like you know, you know, Fox has always been the odd way out. Now it's going to be really interesting because now, uh, you know, just for uh, you kind of catch people up on what's going on here, SmackDown just moved over to USA from Fox. I feel like I need the board. That Matt used to do with the string. You need, you you need know, Matt's board. The, the forbidden board, uh, the forbidden, forbidden door board. The so, tax and string. Yeah, yeah. You know, think we, he, we literally, he made a digital version of that just for everybody that was popping from promotion to promotion. Like when we we're coming out of COVID and like Kenny was on impact and, you know, and it was leading into what became, you know, it was forbidden dooring all over the place basically. And now it's just what happens. Um, but, anyways, so, so. Um, so SmackDown's coming to USA. Uh, 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 NXT is going to in just a few weeks here, I believe, is going to be debuting on the CW. So it's funny that one came from network and now uh, is with you know another one's going back to network. And actually, technically, CW is the uh, remnants of or merger of what SmackDown started on on UPN mm -hmm. back in the day. So it's kind of an interesting full circle situation, right? And they're doing those, but they're actually going to do live shows outside of the Performance Center uh, on the road. Um, and they're bringing some big names in them to, to sell their tickets and everything. I don't know if that's going to be ongoing or not. In the first two weeks, I think they talked about. I haven't looked at the schedule beyond that. And of course, Raw is going to Netflix in January. In the meantime, they're going to be the redheaded stepchild literally um and they're knocking down to two hours and supposedly i believe in the near future smackdown is going to be moving to three hours so a little bit of a shift there so either way riz you're going to get to sleep uh, uh, go to sleep a little bit early on school nights thanks to this good because i'll be <laughs> sleeping still the same time when i watch smackdown okay yes okay like i had three hours on friday yeah, yeah. Is this still on Friday? Is this still going to be on Friday? SmackDown's on Friday. Yeah. Yeah, like it, it it's going to be an interesting kind of trick, I guess, for the mind. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I don't know how long, like, I don't know how much, like, a SmackDown, a three hour SmackDown is going to look. Mm -hmm. It means in, you're going to double the time of Roman's entrance. Okay, I can see it. By the we way, need that we definitely need that. Yeah, absolutely. I loved this week because they were doing that segment at the end of SmackDown. I'm watching it back this morning, and uh, it was because I was catching up from the travel. And I love that it was like there's like 12 minutes left, and they're gonna have Roman and Cody come out and do a segment with all these guys. What are we gonna do? And they had Roman come out, do his entrance, and during the entrance, they kicked the picture in picture. But a perfectly time to him getting back on the mic when he came back. And not like he stalled. Like he just did his entrance. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just like the 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 picture in picture Roman entrance is a very interesting concept to me. And maybe they have a little bit more control, of course, now because they don't have the the um the um uh network issues. Plus also I need to adjust my DVR because they they are not required to end at 9 59 p.m. <laughs> For the local news anymore and i oh. did not see the last few minutes of smackdown so uh, just you're uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna have a actually you will have a problem because all of the shows are supposed to be re uh, uh ending on hulu i believe by the end of the month oh hmm. no yeah i don't know what you're gonna do because there's still last i knew everything's on a month of delay on peacock for it replays. is it, it's a month delay on peacock because i have that also i was kind of curious to see when they go to netflix that compare with smackdown now that it's on usa well yeah yeah it, it is going to be interesting they, they have they have alluded that we're not going to have the limitations obviously we are getting the um listen wwe keeps this this is something that always bugs me is the holy ass chance the holy holy shit chance right um yeah oh yeah if you're gonna do badass stuff that pops the crowd and then Make you're gonna pop. mute it and kill the whole 
vibe of the thing like is killing me they had this cage match they were doing great stuff there was a women's match uh god i remember it was like raw or something like there was a crazy women's match that was going oh no no it was, uh, it was bianca bianca and eo sky were having a baller match on smackdown i think it was no mm-hmm. wait or was it raw i think it was, nope no it's all meshes it's together it doesn't matter it all meshes yeah. together no i think it was raw actually um you know and, and just there's there's holy shit chance for like you pop the crowd, you've worked the crowd up, this is part of it, and you're you're now muting things. I know it's probably a network thing or something, or I, I think they got called out on the carpet for still being TVPG because supposedly there was an all-hands meeting in the last week or so where it reminded everybody that we're still, like, to watch the language out there because they're still TVPG for the moment. Um, so I don't know. All of that seems really kind of peculiar to me. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's it just, I hate this. Like, we've gone so long... And we're doing so good. WWE is doing so good. And the fans are so into it. And I don't know if it makes... Like, I remember... I remember attending a Lucha Underground taping. And um, what is the word? Uh, Punto, I think it is. Um, they, 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 will, they will chant that. Oh, yeah. And this is on uh, uh, El Rey Network. I don't even know if it still exists mm-hmm. anymore. You no, know, it And it's still something where they're just like, hey, we don't want... You know, we're doing a lot of stuff, but we don't like just want you know, street swearing and, and, um, and all that. Right. Um, and, and I guess, you know, that's a bad one for in Spanish. Mm-hmm. So I remember like, I think Vampiro had to come out and say, Hey guys, just want to remind you, we're taping this. Please don't chant such and such, you know, uh, because we are doing this for TV and it's going to make it very difficult. And we want to hear you guys scream, chant, and not have to, not have to, uh, add it around it and stuff. So like there was a statement of that and, and I know, uh, WWE and I hear like NXT, maybe they did this a little bit because it is a little more of a casting call audience kind of deal. Cause it's a smaller thing in the controlled environment. But like, I don't know if there is a, you know, Hey fans, please don't chant swears because it's terrible for TV. You know, Hey, you're on TV but and there's children here or something. Please don't say fuck you, Roman or fuck you. So hey, you, you can know. express yourself, do but please, please don't, you know, and it's not even like one or two explain. people. It's like the crowd. It's okay, yeah, you, the you crowd. call them the WWE universe. They're going to get involved. That's what yes, they, you refer it, to people as the WWE universe. They're going to get involved. That, and that's the beautiful thing is they are now they're singing along. They are involved. They are, responding and yeeting and and wedding and 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 whatever the case may be right and it seemed like that french crowd really changed things when they went to france and had that just amazing crowd over there it seems like a uh, crowd i mean really all crowds what to do so many of them right i mean uh it's so it's it's yeah i i think i think that really amped it up you know i they've said in how many um press conferences um yes united paramount network or upn (laughs) <laughs> in the chat room um yeah i mean yeah it just came back around and you're just like man i you 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 you're doing such a great thing but then you're like not representing well on television when you're doing this right so i don't i don't know it, it's it's an issue and i hope that they kind of get over it and obviously netflix is going to change the game for it i don't think it's going to be as egregious as when they were on smackdown when they would black out things that they didn't like but again you had fcc but now what's going to happen with nxt now that they're on television right you see that that's my biggest thing that i'm curious about right now is how is the netflix show going to compare to the on television show yeah yeah i think it's going to be wildly different um i hope i my hope is if you watch any of those shows internationally uh because um usa is is one of the few places where netflix is not getting everything remember um warm up your vpns ladies and gentlemen so, yeah. so you, t- 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 you gotta get through a couple months here and you'll be okay. And then, <laughs> and then I, I am a, a big advocate of express VPN and, uh, you can so, uh, is, take the swim to the UK with me as I watch the AEW these days. I, and, say, I, uh, I have, I have express VPN actually. So you're preaching <laughs> to the choir already. There you go. Oh, you, oh, so you, you're visiting Canada and the UK already, oh, right? Yeah. I mean, I buy when, with video gaming, you can buy cheaper video games. Sometimes mm-hmm. you change your VPN, buy a video game for six bucks cheaper. I don't know if we should be saying that one out loud, but <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's, that's what I heard people do. Out I, I, my yeah. understanding is that's a thing that people do. I heard some people go to a trailer and buy their pay-per-view for $20. Uh, you know, for, I, that's $60 I, I a year. TikTok. I don't know if it's real. Yeah. I mean, it's allegedly, I don't know. I would ever, <laughs> you know, just like, you know, 
Appa- uh, yeah, apparently. Allegedly. Uh, yes, yes. Allegedly. 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 <laughs> allegedly. My wife was a paralegal, so I've learned her language. <laughs> so uh, I just text her. I'm like, as long as I say allegedly in front of something, I can say anything, right? Actually, I'm going to text her right now and see what she says. <laughs> so, <laughs> just to be like, what are you doing now? She's already freaked out because I adopted a dog for a few hours. Um, anyway, How do you adopt a dog for a few hours? Oh, it met me because I was carrying the pizza back from slice and and it it walked right up to me and i'm like who are you you don't have a a, a, a call i don't do this is a story for a different podcast okay uh, but but the dog was hanging out in here with me for a few hours for getting ready for the show and eating pizza with me and 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 we, we it was on the podcast you know and then the parent and then we i got text i'm like hey it belongs to my neighbor da, 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 and they picked it up in between i had no way to that's awesome it. i don't know if i should have bought it um, but you know, something like that. My mom keeps calling me and asking me what, what the dog, where the dog is and if it's coming home with her because she's got, <laughs> she got space out of the city and everything. Um, if I say allegedly in front of, I love that we're getting a professional things, opinion on this. That's, <laughs> that makes it okay. Right. Just in the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is, the, this is like saying um, this is not legal. With all advice. due respect, and yeah, yeah, saying, yes, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. With all due, ever. yeah, it was just like saying with all due respect, fuck you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um anyways uh let's see where we're at um uh let's see who's in the chat and uh dave ponder is hanging out what's up everybody on tiktok as well that's hanging out too uh please wherever you are i know there's stars and likes and 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 things like that and gifting and things i know it's sub temper over on the twitch channels mm -hmm. if you're watching over there uh so 25 percent off wtf in what context she says (laughs) you know podcast things (laughs) <laughs> wait wait don't say anything i'm just gonna do something real quick just... you're gonna message her <laughs> okay yeah. okay while you're doing that uh so a lot of a lot of fun stuff happening there uh let me see if there's any more things i wanted to uh, touch base yo hey the smackdown effect is real although uh, considering who's involved in this um um megan the stallion and rm of bts the K- uh, korean uh k-pop group i believe that is uh hits a number one in digital sales after their song which now is the uh d- the intro song for smackdown as of last friday uh so it, it catapulted it to number one on the charts so yeah so you don't get the smackdown on hulu so there's definitely no hulu effect there oh no yeah you yeah. don't get the intro mm-hmm. oh really they cut it off yeah it's like a 90 minute condensed version of raw too well, I know I know Raw's ninety minutes, but I didn't know there was a cut down on SmackDown because I used to watch it on there a, a bit. Yeah, actually, there's, before there's I no intro. It. It's like a two second little pop up thing, and then it goes right to it. Really, this like okay. Sometimes, sometimes they just don't do an intro. So okay, well, you know what? Maybe that's what happened because, like I said, the last one I watched was the newest one, and it was oh, okay. two second little pop up thing right to Triple H. Mm, oh wow, fascinating. Okay, yeah, very curious, very curious. Oh no, here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Now I'm really <laughs> question. <laughs> Don't question. Um. Anyways, anyways. Hello. Uh. Let's. Uh. What is this other conversation about Julia Lynn? Anyways, moving on. Hope she's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at? Oh. Where are oh, we yeah. at? Okay. Uh, I don't know. It's whatever the last conversation was. Oh, we're not. Uh, somehow we did not go live on our own YouTube. So uh, that's a thing. Um, that's fine, though. That's uh, We're everywhere else today. Maybe we'll go live here in a moment when I get a moment to fix it. Anyways, hey, thanks to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. We do try to have some extra Patreon, Patreon content. There's actually a live stream uh, with a little bit of the conversation and us fussing with technology. The Patreon uh, uh, post show when we do it is, is a part of that as well. Uh, if the show goes down like it did, um, gee, what, what, where was that? Uh, it seems like it's happening every other week for one reason or another. Um, I think it happened on this show actually. Like the show went down, the computer reset. I had to re-edit the show later, or, or I don't know. I think it even happened on the Awesome Cast. I think I need to get a new computer here. But either way, we're streaming on a whole different device, so so you get to feed when everybody else out there that doesn't pay for it doesn't. So I say it's a nice backup system. You see what's happening. We're on commercials and things like that. It's a true behind the scenes kind of thing. Sort so. his feet. I, it's really fun. sometimes i'll show maybe i'll show the feet that'll be a special patreon for everybody ten dollars and more which includes <laughs> you the riz uh um, also me. sorg just throwing it out there i don't think you mentioned this enough if you're watching on twitch and you have amazon prime 
and you could do a free sub. Yes. So, Drop those free subs, baby. Who isn't on Amazon Prime these days? Come on, watch the boys. Uh, anyways, but thank you to our fans, friends on the following us on Patreon. Our friends at the fan of the show level, Bo Diggity. <laughs> Woo! As Ooh. well as hey. Team Hammer Fist, the Tupac family, Megan Nelson, Bubba Brewer, and Jason French at the Poppy Club level, Dave Propod Ponder, Spouse of Rooster Early Affair at roosterlyaffair.com, and Ratchet and Trench Coat, Tony Kincaid at the Beast Pizza Club level, The Riz. Hi. And at the Mantra level, Bradley and Tina Keys. And that is who I have. And I didn't look at any updates of anybody that's changed this week. So you got an extra shout out probably if, if anybody's moved uh, one way or another. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you, everybody. You can support the show at patreon.com slash wrestling man show. It does help pay the bills to keep the show coming to you and tells me to keep booking Tuesday nights and keep them free and and do it from a hotel room when I'm in Ann Arbor, Michigan, instead of going to the uh, swanky, uh, the swanky dinner. With that, with everybody, or the so, swimming pool, or the swimming pool. I did go to the swimming pool. You did go to the swimming. Yes, I, I saw I that. Did. We, you saw that. We, how'd you see me in the swimming I, pool, Riz? I was about to ask the same thing. How? What do you mean you saw that, Riz? We were you in Ann Arbor too, Riz? Allegedly, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Wait a minute. Allegedly. Wait a minute. You can't work, well, use my word against uh, me. Allegedly. Don't use my word against me. Allegedly, yet. Allegedly, I watched the Killers game yesterday, and I had a good time. Uh, so, uh, the new Batista movie. Um, uh, well, I got, I, the side note: the nice, you know, it was revealed much later. I think on a, on a poster that Drew McIntyre is a part of this, and Drew McIntyre basically plays Drew McIntyre. Um, I don't want to give much away, but it is that kind of fun. Um, uh, th- th- I, I don't know what to compare it to, but like the way it's kind of it introduces a cast of killers, a cast of characters in this thing. And it is one of those fun movies, kind of like I don't want to say John Wicky, you know, kind of thing. Well, I think the people from that made John Wick made it. I'm pretty sure that I might watched be the trailer earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not as is it. Let me say it's not a giant body count. OK, <laughs> like a John Wick film where you're just like, oh, my God, dig a mass grave in this movie kind of situation, right? Um, is it like, uh, look, Titan, you're a wrestler, and and I know you, you I'm, and, uh, was Quinn your trainer? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. And I feel like I've heard, you know, Quinn's one of those guys, Quinn Magnum's one of those guys, I feel like that would always tell you, you know, uh, the slow, the flippy is, is, you know, all the flips don't get as many reactions as the slow and methodical, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's more about the story. The story matters more than the moves. How many, you know, you know, yeah, does the bump get the reaction? And when you watch John Wick, like a sneeze kills a person, you know, is a, is the equivalent. And and, yeah. and you're just kind of like, oh, there's another one. There's a pile of bodies. Well, it wasn't that fun moving on. You know, it's just like flip, flip, tone, bump, 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 and maybe the crowd doesn't react. So I think, you know, is there I, I feel like there's a one to one to that situation. Because it, it seems more like a, John Wick's more of a revenge movie, and that seems more like a he's on d- the defensive for most of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is interesting. It, 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 I mean, you know the plot. He's uh, it, supposedly he thinks he's going to die. He meets this girl, doesn't want her to see her go, see him go out like that. Um, there, there's some, say, that's why I giggled a little bit when you said you don't want to give too much away because I feel like the trailer. Basically, I know everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the story, <laughs> but there's little tweaks in there that they do where you're just like, okay, that's fun, that's fun, that's fun, you know, kind of thing. Like, you know the deal, you know that it's not really, and, and he puts a hit on himself and, you know, goes to the worst p- person, you know, but uh, it's like, it's like, you know, hey, you know how you watch, sm- like, you, we, I'm having these conversations. Well, we know who's going to win in this match on raw right because we know this person's doing this and going to this and they got you know and this this and this we know who's going to win but we still want to watch the story progress in the meantime yeah. right like you know but you know batiste is going to wa- uh, roll off in the sunset with this girl and murder the shit out of everybody that's coming after him somehow um but you're still here for the ride you know yeah, how you, the roller coaster ends. You know what's going to happen, but it's fun to see how it gets there. Exactly. It's fun to see how he gets there. You know how the roller coaster ends, but you want to go for the ride. That's okay. And I like, you know, we always bitch about that, you know, unless you're like an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Um, by the way, the, um, oh, what's the, what's the, what's the Trapped? Was, Trap was really good. Uh, I really prefer okay. I really like that one. Um, the one where they're in like a giant theater. Like no, a, it's a, a concert. concert. It's a concert. A giant and, concert, and then yes. they can't get out. Yes, 
but but you do have a nice half hour of the movie after the parts where they show you everything in a trailer to be like what's the rest of this movie gonna be you know so um you know that kind of thing um he gets less trapped eventually i guess you could say but i mean yeah what else are they gonna do with that right but anyway so um yeah so i mean but I just, I just, I, I'm just loving these, um, these interviews I see. One, Batista with puppies. Have you seen this? I have not seen the Batista with puppies interview. But it's I'm a TikTok curious, where though. they just put him in this white room and release the puppies on him, and it's that's, so wonderful. <laughs> see, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really glad that more um, wrestlers are making the crossover into movies. To be completely honest with you, oh, absolutely. Like, as He's far as especially action stars, like they all, but so many of them have that action star look, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's so funny since John Cena's doing like going the comedy route. He's doing that. I, I I haven't finished watching it, but he did that jackpot movie. He did that. Um. Oh my god, what's the one where they hired him to be his best friend? I was just gonna say uh, that movie is uh, hilarious. I can't remember what it's great. called. Either, but he is so funny. Ricky Stenicky. Ricky. Yep, that's it. Ricky, Ricky Stenicky. Yep. Ricky Stenicky. Yes, I, that was I got good. that way too quickly. And he's so good at the comedy thing, right? Like he's so good mm -hmm. at, at at that. Uh, uh, Batista has been really good. I saw there's another I Spy came up on Amazon as well uh, with him with the girl, uh, the, the the kid that you know, and he's a spy, and like she finds him out or something, right? Um, you know, and and she was in something else that was pretty good recently too. I thought maybe maybe if if I'm not mistaken, um, but. Yeah, no, it, well, it shows how versatile there were, right? Uh, and, and and even, like, you know, him talking but, about, like, in his interviews about how, like, he was only around for, like, five years of wrestling before he started rolling into this, which is, which mm -hmm. is like, he feels like such a bigger um, uh, uh, staple, you know, from something like this, right? Well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that. He really does. You're not lying. Like, he feels... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Like, wow, like he okay. returned a couple of times, but nothing, like, really long or anything like that. Um, there's one, and this is, this is the thing, like, I, I feel like, you know, he's not, uh, he's not a part of this giant ensemble, like, like with guardians. So there's a lot of like really direct interviews that he's having with people. And I think he had a, uh, a Chris Van Vliet one where, uh, he was talking to Triple H about how he didn't think he belonged in the hall of fame because he had such a short career. And I love, I love it. Triple H apparently tells him like, well, yeah, but it's everything you did afterwards that makes you a hall of fame WWE person. You know, you know, that idea, yeah. we, you know, we've seen this, you know, John and Rock and, and him going out and being part of Guardians and Fast and the Furious mm -hmm. and, and, and Peacemaker is, you know, only elevates, is part of the reason why WWE does so well right now, right? Is it, it, it helps become mainstream. We, we've gone from, you know, we we've gone from uh, the Marine to to the Marvel Cinematic Universe for a lot of these guys. Yeah. You know, See, I'm surprised it took this long for this type of thing to happen because if you think about it, to be a WWE superstar, you have to be somebody who's really good at playing a character. Absolutely, so, like, absolutely. And, and it's interesting the ones that have tried and didn't get through, like just like you know. Austin was trying for a lot of it and got some roles. Uh, uh, Orton was doing a lot of I don't think Austin played that much of a character, though. I no, no, no. Just, uh, it was an was exaggerated just version of yeah. himself. Yeah. Well, it's just like this. Like, uh, uh, the line is, like, I think they're talking to Drew, and he's like, uh, apparently the, the director's talking to Batista. And obviously, this is a Batista vehicle for the most part as the star, right? So it was, it was really just kind of a feature piece for him. Um, just like a Jason Statham movie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, the B yeah, yeah. For instance, but, uh, yeah, by the way, like, this, this might be better than the beekeeper, and I really love the beekeeper. <laughs> so, another Lionsgate <laughs> action schmage movie, right? Oh, no, sorry, but like, saying? you get like if you even go back further to like Hogan movies, why Mr. I, I, Ma, I didn't Mr. get that far, yeah, like, or Bret Hart and Lonesome Dove, <laughs> Lo Bret Hart and Lonesome Dove, which was, yeah, um, I think Sean did a few cameos. Uh, back in the day, but like it just felt like they were playing jo the, the the jock, the, the character, the, yeah, the dumb see wrestler actor. I, yeah, I, well, I got two points the on this. Head. But, I got mm -hmm. you'll go finish your thought. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. But I was I was saying like before that. I mean after after I think like maybe the Rock and maybe the longest no no young longest yard, uh, walking tall. They started to shift over a little bit mm -hmm. towards, like, oh, maybe these guys can actually act. Mm -hmm. Now they mentioned that now they kept doing action moves, like you saw Rock doing rock bottoms, mm -hmm. uh, and and like 
DDTs and in, in, in normal settings, which was interesting. But you started seeing Batista get roles that are big. Like you get, you see Batista getting talking roles. You see Cena going from WWE films to Peacemaker. You see the, you see the snowball effect in that. Yeah. Yeah. Again, we talk about the, uh, the awkward holding the, the gun thing between Batista and TV smooth a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, it, it, uh, remember, remind me of bring up, uh, uh, PB a little bit again, uh, for something else, but I want to get off this, um, uh, is bringing up in the chat room. And I've been thinking about this, you know, uh, you, you, you think about, uh, who, who always did Walker, Texas Ranger, who was always on that one too. That's another one to try. I know I just saw a clip with Hulk Hogan. Oh. I didn't know existed. Um, was that Brett? What did Brett? No, Stone Cold maybe? Did he pop up in that? No, Stone, I, no, Stone I'm Stone, thinking Nash Bridges. Nash Bridges. Nash Bridges was, was Stone Cold. But I got to yeah. think because this brought up because I think the closest thing to a quote unquote mainstream one, I think they were really close to it and and could have potentially got there. Obviously, Jesse Ventura had a very big mm. role with uh, Predator. Um, I ain't got time but, to bleed. I, but yeah, I know. And Roddy Piper. I mean, you know. I, it, it always astonishes me because I feel like when I played the game, I didn't realize what, how much Duke Nukem was based on these other movies because I didn't have those. those To me, mm-hmm. like I was just rewatching Army of Darkness. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is all Duke Nukem. Wow. <laughs> you know, and it, like a lot of that was really kind of introduced to me by Duke Nukem. And, and then I started watching these older movies on like sci-fi channel or something. Right. I think I started getting at the time. You know, yeah, you, they live, you know, um, you know, Piper Piper didn't feel like. I mean, he was at least like on par with the typical '80s action mm-hmm. deal, right? I I feel 100%, like and, yeah. I mean, they live as a John Carpenter call classic, obviously, but you know, he was on that like Bruce Campbell kind of line, right? And that's you know still still something. Um, well, didn't, he, didn't he have like a pilot episode of something? Oh, uh, Piper, Piper and Jesse yeah. Victoria tag team. Uh, yeah. where they're both cops that were former pro wrestlers, or yes. they pro wrestlers that were former cops. I can't remember no, which way that was. They, they were they were going back in the cops. <laughs> they were they were okay. They were, they were, they were wrestlers going. They were to wrestlers cops. becoming cops. Okay. Yeah, and also <laughs> I, mean, uh, I just want to point out. What, I remember watching that. Yeah, I want to point out what you were talking about, Sword, mm. just a little bit ago, because I did some research. Uh, there was only one episode with a wrestler in it. Of Walker. Of Walker, just weird. Uh, it was called the Crusader. Okay. And uh, the wrestler was Piper, actually. Was Piper? Then what is this yeah. clip I saw of Hulk Hogan being like in like a, a, a in Maybe jail and a racist? I, I or said something. that was my mom's favorite show. I think I've seen probably every episode of that. So like, when you said there was a wrestler, I was like, "There's no way I missed a wrestler." I felt like I show. did too, and I was like, "How would I miss something like that?" He yeah. played Cody the Crusader Conway. He played a wrestler. Yes, I'm curious. There was an episode of Quantum Leap with some pro wrestlers, and I and and I, I should look back and see if it's anybody that I would recognize now. Oh, Riz hit the research department. He's on it. It looks like wait, he's wait, already wait, on wait. it. Wait, no, what was it? I'm sorry. Quantum, Quantum it? Leap, the original Quantum Leap. Quantum Leap. There's one where he leaped into a wrestler's in the middle of the match. Obviously, they exposed the business, which was probably pretty big for 1989 or Ooh, 90 or whatever. Um, and uh, <laughs> what the fuck? And he so I, I just remember it was one of those like he leaped into a tag team that was supposed to be Russians. Oh my god. What? It's gonna be good. Terry mm. Funk? Of what? course. Let's go. I think it's, choice, let me see least. if I can find anything else on this, but it was uh the body of Terry Samus, a professional wrestler. So Part of, a, to part of a champion. That... By the way, it's on the Peacock. By the way, they did cancel quantum, the new Quantum Leap. I understand. Uh, I, I thought they canceled very that. Sad. Like, what? They got two seasons out of it, and I, I was I was with it. I appreciated it. So, so you know, he. I like <clears throat> I kind of liked it better than the Knight Rider reboot a few years ago. But that's anyways, true. You were saying. Uh, so he did not leap into Terry Funk. No, 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 no. He le- he leapt into somebody named Terry Samus, who was not a wrestler. Mm-hmm. Or he, I mean, the actor was not a wrestler, I should say. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to see if I can see anything else. But yeah, the only one here is it, that actually 
or is showing as a wrestler is Terry Funk. If you're going to have one, that's a good one to have. Yeah. This is season three, episode 20, uh, the 51st episode in Quantum Leap. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got I got worried because I saw Heart of a Champion July twenty third nineteen fifty five. So oh. this is so I thought that was like the actual date of the episode, and then I realized mm-hmm. that can't be right. Uh, and like I said, this is a very like like that was rare in nineteen eighty nine to have a full like wrestling exposed kind of thing like that. I mm-hmm. thought like that oh, was like rare. yeah yeah like like as uh, I, I think I made a statement that I, I believed in. I believe they're wrestling longer than Santa Claus kind of thing. And, uh, and, and I think this is one of the things I started like, Oh, Oh, what? Wait, what's happening? Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm uh what probably eight at the time during this, <laughs> watching this show for the on air. Um, so that's, that's You're probably, really... Now that you say that, I probably did too. I probably believed in wrestling longer than Santa Claus. Cause I remember the day my brother told me wrestling was fake. So, <laughs> I remember the, like all the kids at school, you know, and like you know, I don't remember when I found out Santa Claus was fake. I 100 percent remember the day I found out wrestling was fake. Oh yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. It's like you kind of figured it out wrestling was still like you know, and of course I, I was taking my WWF magazines in through like '91 or so, so uh, that was getting real. Um, so uh, though the, the walking around with a shirtless Lex Luger magazine, you know, in a small town, that definitely did not yeah go over so, well. So no wonder I was bullied so bad. Oh, yeah. Rogu in Rogu three XX uh, in the Twitch chat actually mentioned that Piper is all also in Always Sunny. He was amazing in Always. Sunny. Oh yeah. Oh, he yeah. was amazing in Always Sunny. You're right. He was so good in Always Sunny. In fact, I watched that episode. I I keep going back every once in a while and trying to like okay, I'm gonna watch some Always Sunny. Where I think I left off about here. I try to go oh, back. He's in the he's in the wrestling episode. It's, it's actually there's a famous clip where Frank plays the garbage man. Oh yeah, the garbage uh, trash man. The trash man. The trash yeah, man. So. Oh. That's, I forgot about him in that. He's great in that show. That's great. Um. <laughs> anyways, uh, anyways, the colors game is pretty, very good. Um, mm-hmm. they did not do well enough. They did not have it in Dolby. That tells me how well they believe in a movie. <laughs> so. I'm kind of curious how it did was the colors game. Oh, and, and I love so. Okay, I, I if you if you listen to the Patreon, you know I had a, a affinity for watching the Beekeeper because it was so wonderfully ridiculous, right? Um, kind of like how I liked the new Beetlejuice movie because I just thought it was one of the most unhinged things I've ever watched, <laughs> you know. And um, and, uh, and 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 I love like the little things in this was like again everybody's kind of a character. Drew is playing a basically Drew McIntyre. They're like, we need a giant Scott, and he's like, well, he exists. His name's Drew McIntyre. Let's book him, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. <laughs> um, and uh, what the hell was I saying? But there's like just stuff in there, and it was like. They're like, like they just keep referring to it as the game, <laughs> the whole through the movie, you know. He's like, well, he's on the wrong. They're on, like, 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 oh, he got killed because he was on the wrong side of the game. It's like, what? Well, I, have a, I actually have a question for you. In the in the trailer, they kind of give off the illusion that there might be like a Tinder for hitmen. <laughs> Is that what's going on? There is absolutely a fucking app for Hitman. <laughs> okay, that's what I... It seemed like it's it was so... like... She was like swiping left and stuff on an app. Yeah. I was like, is this Hitman Tinder? What oh, they go right into it. And it is so much fun when they do this. Okay. Right? It is... It is... It is a... This is a great... It's gonna listen. It's Lionsgate, so it's gonna be on Peacock within the next two months. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, I can't Lionsgate's wait to see movies it. always just pop up. Like you were like, <laughs> oh, it's still in the theater. It is on Peacock. Okay, I'm here for it. Uh, oh, so. I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading some Rotten Tomato. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, like Rotten Tomatoes is is thirty nine percent. Fandango seventy eight percent. IMDb is five point nine out of ten. Listen, it's not like it's it's not fucking Shakespeare, guys. Yeah. It is like th- this. Is. This one. This one. Per- this one review. Uh, one of the uh, reviewers, I guess. Seriously, Dave Batista literally dismembering some K-pop band lookalikes <laughs> yes, is it- not an, <laughs> as exciting as it may sound. I don't know. It's kind of fun. It was Batista fun. tries to parry the awful. load of the crumbling script. There is no script in this movie. Shut up. It was really. I feel like the most of it was ad libbed, except for the effects. Oh, the crumbling script on this, on the, on his broad shoulders, and overshadowed tonal shifts with his huge charisma. It's a, a fucking charisma. I mean, that was 
you yeah. know, that, that, that last part was pretty good. I mean, the, the yeah. last little little bit was. There was a uh, there was something with the tech uh, tech podcast I listened to. Then this old tech journalist, and they were like, they were reading a review of something. And there was like some word that was dropped in there, and they're like, oh yeah, sometimes there's like. Um, like side bets to try to get ridiculous words into your articles, and I feel like that's what critics okay. do all the time. It's like a, a, you know, they just stick big words in there that nobody understands to make themselves sound smarter when they're they're reviewing fucking a Batista murder movie. <laughs> just like, hey, settle, <laughs> yeah. hey, settle the fuck down. You got paid. Stop yeah. being so. It's mad. a bunch Watch of big f- dudes beating yeah. each other up. We get what we're we know what we're going to see. Like, yeah, I, yeah. We know what we're getting. Just like this show talking about SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, we know we know what we're getting. We know what we're getting. Uh, side note: I'm going to I talk about it on Awesome Cast, but I want to talk about um for Patreon if we have time. I uh, Riz, uh ask me about the knights at the Renaissance knights. Fair. Oh, and how the knights at your Renaissance Fair are probably pussies. In comparison, uh, mm-hmm. so um, maybe the first Renaissance Fair that I went to. Do they bring out light tubes? <laughs> Close. <laughs> they me, might as well have. It ooh, sounds like say, huh? if they, this ooh. stuff got pulled out at, at at a show that I was filming, much like when Pondo had a light tube and nobody told me, I would be like, "What the fuck are we doing right now?" Uh, nobody told so, you or the camera people. No, no, right nobody there. told us. Like, like. <laughs> When when Jason Gorey has to be the one to settle you down, you know? <laughs> really put this going on, man. What's going on? Um, anyways, speaking of late tubes and things that uh, concern me, go over to indywrestling.us. Please subscribe to it, so I'll become less concerned, <laughs> so we can, um, you know, uh, yeah. So uh, indywrestling.us, you can see what we're talking about: Madman Pondo versus Gorey at the last VCW show. Uh, you match. can see uh, mm-hmm. 880 Wrestling. A lot of great stuff happening over there. Um, again, uh, the to my knowledge, the only weekly training school live stream, uh, 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 the longest episodic live stream training school show <laughs> on, that I'm aware of. We have to get that. That I'm aware that. of. Uh, you yeah. know, I'm going to get that. Somebody write. Can somebody write that line down for me so I can send it to Toddy for uh, announcing on Thursday? Uh, <laughs> uh, but like, but it's going to have all these allegedly potentially the longest running call. <laughs> Uh, yeah. episodic um um uh Just live, live stream training show Hash, asterisk 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 hashtag thursday night fights um <laughs> and so uh leo we have a lot of fun over there we are going to be live streaming again thursday night fights is going to be going down this thursday night live and free for everybody and uh and uh we will be oh, no 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 the thing we're doing friday is not actually wrestling so um but <laughs> i'm getting confused already um but no we do have apwf has been doing some great shows on there uh getting some rave reviews from matches there uh i ever we were at big uh, big league pro uh, uh last week and everybody kept putting over the uh spencer slade and bill collier match um you know from apwf and uh yeah there's a lot of interesting po- cross pollinating there a bigger league pro of course had um pretty boy smooth um against myron reed uh so I, th- I think he's currently a tna guy if i'm not mistaken i know mlw he's been big with um so you know a lot of great stuff going on there i think everybody's been and has been supporting i love when people pop up and say hey i've been watching and stuff like i you know because i i don't we don't know our size we just see a big number and 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 some emails and i don't know who they are uh so and there's a, there's not a good feedback mechanism on our on it's our so right weird now. when when people come up to me and go hey I, w- I was watching your i was watching the thing i was like oh god and they liked it. Like, yeah, you forget that people watch yeah, this stuff. Yeah, or watching us right now is literally right now. It might be through the. It might be through the internet. It might be from the mm. taco stand across the street. Actually, it's closed right now. But still, you get the idea. Um, but anyway, it could still is be it, in is there. It closed? It closed. Wait, is it closed? Closed or is it just closed? Oh, it's it's the past. It's past closing time. And yes, the oh. consumer alert sticker is still on the window. Uh, there is not mine. Uh, so. They probably had. They probably have more. No, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Um, also, I just checked. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, yeah, you're, doing no, the, no, no. Your you're doing the thing. You're doing the thing. thing. Oh, oh, oh. Finish but anyways, thing. including that is RWA's uh, big show this weekend. Uh, is it Fall Free For All? Is that what we're doing? Is it? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I believe it is. Fall I think it's a all, fall yes. free for all. I think it's September show. Uh, we've only been doing it for 15 years. It's the same, almost, <laughs> almost all the same show titles every year. Uh, but anyways, uh, we, I don't know. We changed August. That weirded me out. Uh, <laughs> but it was like, oh, it's just a renegade rumble now. Okay. Goodbye aggression, I guess. Um, 
But anyways, including this weekend is uh, RWA's uh, Fall Free For All. Again, uh, Rhino and uh, J-Rock is one of the marquee matches that's going to be a part of that. But before I go to the Titan, Riz apparently has something to bring up. That's a follow-up. So I want to I wanted to follow up on the Killers, Killers Game uh, reviews for a bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, which one had the... Lo- what you, you think... So which one had the lower score? Killers IMDb, Game? IMDB, right. Oh. Or The Crow? Oh, I bet the crow did. I understand why people wouldn't like that. There is, um, listen, I'm a big fan of the original. Mm-hmm. I think it's the best one since the original. But. <laughs> See, that seems like a big but. Um, <laughs> Keep a lot going, of anger, yep. very light on the heart. Right? Mm. Um, I still quote things from the original movie because they hit a lot of chords. The, so this one okay and the answer is so it is the crow mm-hmm. with a 23 percent rotten tomato right ranking wow. mm. and a 64 percent of the audience and both movies is... were wildly unnecessarily gory too mm-hmm. actually no crow was gorier yeah, that's honestly. what i heard yeah, I, I didn't it's watch it. It's it's rough. Um, it's 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 fun. It's fun so, for that, but it's like so. What you're uh, saying is a good way. That's a yeah. that's a good review for a movie. It's rough. It's, yeah, it's. yeah. <laughs> but it's like 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 it's like ooh ooh ooh. You know uh, you know reactively rough. But I mean I would mm-hmm. watch it again. I'm not buying the DVD. You know what I mean. Uh, I am buying the Beetlejuice DVD. So that is in, that is in my re- that is in my rewatch list. Too. So uh, so you're you're saying that nobody in like five ten years is going to wrestle as scargasgard's crow unless they're darby allen i mean darby out i mean i'm really darby allen crow is darby dressed allen. as darby allen so all right here to, we'll do a little crossover do you think because i honestly think darby allen could possibly be the first AEW person to break into movies from AEW. If that okay makes sense. okay the, what, what do you who do you if outside of him and I would say MJF would be the probably the other option really. He's already stepping into it. He was in the Von Eric movie. He got cut yeah. a lot of it, but I think he got an EP role or something. Like to actually have a movie based around them though. Who do you think would be the first AEW star? God, I think you could do something with Swerve. Swerve. Oh, I always forget yeah, about Swerve, him. Until so somebody brings him up, and then I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Amen. yeah. Like, yeah, it's um. Because everybody's a wrestler, you know. Nobody. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a thing like, that, like, I feel like so many people in AEW are there because they want to be wrestlers, you know, and not I mean? characters, yeah, and right. not and not characters, and not you know, uh, from there. Like, I I know a lot of them do do roles and things like that, but like like off of Miro, I know was doing Rusev was doing some some stuff, um, and uh, you know, there, there's a lot of that, but but if we're if we're going if we're going by AEW roster. We are uh, omitting the high perform the the best performance of any wrestler in a movie. Uh, that is Adam Copeland in Money Plane. Oh, I still haven't yeah. seen that. Wait, hold on. What's where's the, what's it on? I was, I was, I was oh, thinking it's more Hulu, about popular it? from AEW. I, I believe it. No, it. I think it's an actual movie movie. It is because it was Adam Copeland and Kelsey Grammer. And Kelsey Grammer. Mm-hmm. Like that alone, I need to see. Oh, I have so many. I was gonna say, I'm gonna to write watch. that one down. I gotta watch Buffy the Vampire. I have to purchase and watch the uh, Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. because I just watched the video about that. Um, what was what were we just saying? Money plane, money, money plane. plane. Okay, putting that on the list. Also, need to watch They Live Again. Money plane is now it, on. So it's it's Hoopla. Kelsey Grammer, Adam Copeland, oh, and on. Denise Richards. Oh my what? god! What? Uh, I guess what I'm watching. <laughs> it is on my library app. <laughs> and this was a movie oh that came god. out in 2020. 2020. I am borrowing it right now. I think I have the app on my Apple TV. I think this is what I'm watching. I hit play right now, guys. This is great. I That's love crazy. I love the Carnegie Library system. Uh, so this was a theatrical release in 2020. In I'm sure July? it was. A, I'm sure it was a light release. I was gonna say yeah. In, Wait, in 2020 in July? Yeah. Then it practically didn't get out. No, <laughs> so, I was gonna say when they release it to TV because we weren't a lot of the house. It had to been like both <laughs> or something, right? Because I feel like it was on Hulu at the same time. So it's yeah. That's when. 
Oh, now I need to check their now I need to check the Rotten Tomatoes. Go ahead, Sorg. Anyways, R- this section is about RWA because it's this week and uh, Tim Titans here. A lot of great stuff happening. But, but so you've been um, you're you're officially under the RWA Sports Media uh, uh, banner, and and you know RWA has been around for a while, but it's been very. Um, I guess old school in a lot of the ways when we've been working with them. And it was really cool to see over the last year, like you've kind of come on and have been uh, obviously developing. And, and we've been talking, I know uh, uh, backstage about things to improve on and, and, and what we can do with the, the, <laughs> everybody knows independent wrestling. Allegedly you, maybe you don't have a lot of assets. It's trying to, try to get eyes on there and figuring out better ways to get eyes on the product itself. Is yeah. And the like, biggest mission of my, yeah, and we don't have the highest end of equipment available to us all the time backstage or anything like Heck that. No. All, you know, it, the there's been there's been times where we did it on a cell phone. So. Yeah, but that's okay as long as you're doing the right things around it and stuff like that. So this has been a developing thing, and I love that. Like I'm, so, I didn't even know when you're doing this because you're like in the recesses of the thing. We're doing our live <laughs> stream out there, or at least the crew is. You know, they, they really kind of take care of their own thing these days. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I've really appreciated like how much, you know, like when I do, I, I do a pre-show video for the live stream every, every month and I'm loving how much content I'm finding to work with. And it's most of the roster and it's pushing the stories. It's so much more than the wrap up that we used to do. We used to just grab, you know, the, the two, two announcers be like, Hey, talk about the show. And maybe we'll bring a wrestler in and talk to him for a minute. And I was like, how's oh, the rings tearing down? And it's so weird. Like you're really doing like, you know, uh, uh, recently, I had the, the fortune to do those New Japan post match comments, where literally, like, they just pull them aside and and everybody goes to the the, the logo screen and you know says a few words or somebody gets attacked or something, and you and you guys are uh, uh, doing those kinds of things. So, like, like, tell me a little bit about that uh, kind of endeavor and how how you've seen that grown over the last year. I'd say the biggest thing is it it started off as just kind of Quinn having the idea, and then. Once he told me what the idea was, I tried to, to take his thought, his like, um, his vision and put it out. Like a lot of the part is he wants it to feel raw. So I'll try to grab as many people as I can directly as soon as they come through the curtain, get them up into the promo room, like get them while they still have that emotion and that adrenaline. Like, I think that's a big part of it is figuring out what's going to get eyes on it while also getting the people in their emotional while they're still in that mindset, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the yeah, the kind of the, the raw reactions of things, right? Yeah, so. I say it's definitely been been cool watching my stuff in the pre show. I, I stand behind like in Gorilla and just like I made that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is also interesting, like as you go, and I know, I know you're you're kind of in that stage where you're kind of growing into it. Um, but when it starts coming off, like I, I, I yeah, it's like you know when all of us went, none, none of us want to. I'm sure you'll cringe if you look at your stuff from a year ago, <laughs> like we all do, right? <laughs> you oh, know, yeah, you it's... know. I, I can't edit videos of myself. I like it's mm. I can't stand the sound of my own voice or to watch myself. So like I yes. have a I don't know how you do this much stuff. I have a hard time editing videos of myself. Notice I don't edit a lot. <laughs> That's why everything's Notice live. I anymore. never I never listen to things I'm on. No, no, no. I I don't listen to this show more than I have to, but but I am in my own ears all the time. Um and you hear promos and have to do those clips and things like that, right? Um so so I get used to it, you know. Hey, we learned this week that Riz has a voice for radio. Oh, yeah, that was a weird. That was a weird moment. Yeah, yeah, that it does get weird. It, but also, that's what happens when you get on the microphone once a week and talk to people, you know, <laughs> you know and try to be intelligible for a little bit, mm-hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. I actually have the problem where I, I know that we we're, we're off shooting here. I have the problem because it's been explained to me by several of my friends. I do not talk clearly unless I have a microphone in front of me. <laughs> I'm very mumbly and nobody can hear me and I'm very tired uh, and I'm very tired before the show. But um, there is a, um, you know, I think you're familiar with this as well. Like there's kind of when the red lights on and you're, you're, you you're step out on, on yep, stage, you, turn you, it on. you turn the thing on or you know what I mean? You know, mm-hmm. like I, well, I see that's, that's been the biggest benefit for this for me is I get to be behind the camera instead of in front of it. So like I'm where mm-hmm. I wanted to be technically now. Good. You found your place. And I think that's good. I, I, I do not, discount people that were in the ring and moved to an out of the ring position. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I was, everything I read online was that was the best way to get into the business itself was go through the training, prove that you can do it. Like, 
So that that was my I've always wanted to be a backstage person. It just seemed like this was the correct way to get there. Yeah, yeah. And you respect what's happening in the ring, right? Yeah. So and, yep, that that's you could I, I'm I'm an athletic I, that you could say all that stuff, but you can't say <laughs> I don't respect what's I, going on in there. I've, like, I've had this idea in my head that every one of my videographers should, should get in the ring and take a bump a couple of times. Well, it, you know? it changes you. It, it definitely like it makes you think about it different, for sure. Riz, we're going to have Wait, you take bump class no. on uh, t- Thursday. You could take a Johnny Norris choke slam. Those are fun. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Look, I've seen what happens at RWA with our our videographers, Sorg. Yes. Yes. I need I need something in, in writing and in contract form. I mean, this is wrestling. You did have this a videographer is... eliminating somebody from a Rumble last show at RWA, though, so you never know, We've, man. We haven't seen him no, yet. No, we still haven't since. found him. We still have we, we we ran the radio on here like we. I ran mean, out I wasn't door. gonna bring that up. I was just gonna give him his props. I kind of was I gonna. Mean, I didn't want to bring the mood down here by pointing up the fact that nobody knows where Matt is. Like we don't think he's coming back for Saturday. Like we're no, still like, trying to figure out what we're gonna do for Saturday for that position. He's been there for years. And he hasn't read a message in the group text since then. So. No, 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 no. Matt Carlin's is 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 disappeared. He had his wrestling debut and now he's gone. <laughs> So having having been on the receiving end of Malachi Gage, I don't blame him though. If, mm-hmm. if I could have, I would have disappeared. But and the amazing part was he wasn't touched <laughs> at all. Well, I guess he was. He was pulled out of the ring. I suppose that that is something that happened. But yeah. Um, anyways, that, that that shows you how how wild it gets at at RWA in in, in general. So um, you know from that. So so obviously there's that. You know we got a big show coming up this week. Um, you know the highlights. Are obviously Rhino's going to be there. I think this is Rhino's first time at RWA. Mm-hmm. We've had some ECW alums, especially in this last year. We've of course had uh, uh, Sammy in a couple of times. Uh, actually, his tag match uh, teaming with uh, John McChesney just got posted. Uh, I think a couple weeks ago on our channel on YouTube. You can go watch that for free. Um, but also, you know, we you know we've had uh, Tommy Dreamer has popped up as well. So, so as you, as a, a you know somebody backstage kind of reporting stuff, are you excited about seeing Rhino kind of roll into uh, West Newton for the first time? I am super excited to see Rhino. I was a huge Rhino mark growing up. Um, see, J Rock has found a way to either like outsmart or do everything in his power to get over. Like, I'm very curious to see what his plan is to try to overcome Rhino. But I'm going to be honest, I don't see it happening. It's just Rhino's a force in my mind. Like to me being from like starting in my Pittsburgh independent wrestling uh, timeline in 2006, I have seen so many Rhino matches. (laughs) I've seen so many many Rhino matches this year, man. Yeah, I know. (laughs) know? I I know. But like, just to know that I'm going to see another one Saturday. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's actually exciting. You know, here's and, the, I don't think I've seen Rhino live since he was in ECW. Oh wow! So, okay. Yeah, I'm 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 very excited. Um, I, but I'm, I'm loving the talent that is coming in here. Uh, Gianni Michael Enrico, of course, he's going to be taking on um uh, Eli for the No Limits Championship. I know there's been an ongoing. This is there. that is match of the night potential. By the way, those Absolutely. two are gonna those two definitely are gonna tear the house down. Mm-hmm. Um, finally, um, oh, we're having a contract signing between Preston Everest, uh, the real super hentai quote unquote NHL Supreme. I see. Don't, don't, no, 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 no. It's, don't quote. There's no quotes. He is super hentai. Okay. Why isn't his picture super hentai in this one? I don't know. Somebody. Yeah. Some, I don't yeah, know. Who's, that, a, who's the graphic department on this one? Yeah, it's like he had goggles on. So yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. that's Preston Everest. That's not super hentai. Um, I, I, the Gambinos and the wise guys are, are mixing it up again. This is actually, I'm, I heard backstage that this was called by the Gambinos because the wise guys were technically banned from RWA, but then mm-hmm. they started sending people in on the Gambinos. So I believe that the Gambinos went to Derek and requested that they let the wise guys back so that they could handle this business. So I, I'm excited. This could be a tear the house down match mm-hmm. too. I heard speculation like literally tear the house down. that Emily D is collecting plastic bags again. And they're not for recycling. Speaking of camera people, that's another one y'all lost, huh? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This seems to keep yeah, happening sword. at RWA, huh? Yeah, yeah. sort. <laughs> I mean, between all of that and 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 Chachi got hit in the nuts by Jock Sampson, that's why he's backstage now. 
Is that RWA? Yeah, it was RWA. It was Chachi's oh. birthday, and Jock Sansom gave him a birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> that, would be, that would have been a fall free-for-all, because his birthday was last weekend. Yep. Happy birthday, Chachi. Yeah, I think he yelled, happy birthday, Chachi. And We're not going to kick you in the nuts saw the camera dr- You saw the camera drop, and you heard a cowbell. <laughs> so, the camera was safe. The camera was fine. A lot of great stuff happening there. Um, AJ Alexander back from Japan uh, again. Uh, uh, going to be a part of that as well. Warhoss is going to be back against our friends, the STDs. Uh, I think AJ is fighting Dennis Gregory, correct? Yeah, Dennis Gregory. So that'll be say, good. We haven't seen him in a couple months. So Yep, he popped up Exciting at the Rumble. See him back. Uh, we got uh, uh, Gory and Rev against uh, Mike Law. And I'm not familiar with this big Cuzzo. Character. Did you see the video that Mike Law released standing next to him, though? He looks like a giant. Oh, yeah? And there's, okay. Mike Law released a video with him where, I don't know if you stood next to Mike Law, but this dude towers over mm-hmm. Mike Law. Mm-hmm. This this looks like a very, very large gentleman. See, I'm watch. I know I shared it, but I don't know if I watched the whole time. I'm really bad about watching videos. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm more of a uh, publisher. Uh, no, no, honestly, I don't I I don't uh, I don't get the opportunity because you know I, I do a lot of shows. I don't get the opportunity to catch up with what the card is and the and the video promos going into it until we're setting things up for that pre-show. And oh, I'm just sure. like, and that's when like like it's literally like the day before the show. I'm like, we're doing what now <laughs> with both shows? <laughs> RWA, VCW, TPW, all of it. I was like, wait, who's gonna be there? You know, unless we do like a good breakdown like this, like I, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I like Cowpoke Paul is going to be there against Dior Salvador. Uh, so a lot of great stuff happening there. I'm trying to find that video with uh, with. Uh, Mike That's another Paul good well. match that has a lot of potential. I'm, I'm going to yeah. tag you in a Outside sort. the Royal, we haven't seen or outside the Rumble, we haven't seen either one of them in a couple months either. So, Do we know the status of Tony Kincaid's jacket after his Rumble spot? Um, do we know the status, the status of Tony Kincaid? Well, he usually comes and does these previews and he wasn't, he, he didn't respond and, I and here you are. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm kind of concerned. So we lost the cameraman. We lost Kincaid. So we're kind of evened out, I guess. Uh, but you know, uh, and also not to mention Titan, you made your RWA wrestling debut. <laughs> I, I did. I did. I, I, it was, it went unfortunate for me, but I'm very happy. I got to actually check that off the bucket list. That was like, the one promotion that I've always wanted to work in. So it was very cool to get to work with them. And I appreciate that opportunity for sure. That's great. A lot of fun there. So I, of course, you know, you're from, you know, we, you know, we've worked other promotions before and, and RWA has been a, a, a different animal entirely. Um, you know, I, I know you're coming under the Quinn magnet area and, and everything like that. And you're familiar with Quinn from, from the other place. Uh, uh what was your impression kind of going into RWA? I, I think you, did you, did you not attend as a, as a spectator in, in, in previous years as well? So you were familiar, I did, right? I actually did attend as a spectator. Like I remember Ryan Mitchell and Jock Sampson, oh all them God, guys. Okay. Like, so I'm, I'm pretty old school. I actually went to high school with Ryan Mitchell. <laughs> oh, so, man. Oh. Yeah, we, we both grew up in that area. That's why that was kind of like the bucket list one for me, because it was the closest one to where I grew up at. Mm-hmm. And obviously, like a very uh, different wild crew out there. The as first, well, so. the, one of the I remember Super Oprah being there. And like, so we're talking older times, RWA for sure. Oh, boy. I don't, I don't even remember the Super Oprah appearances. Uh, I remember I, Super Oprah. I'm trying Beast. to think of who Super Oprah wrestled one time against a hillbilly gimmick. I don't remember, but I remember they did a over the rope dive. That was just bananas. I think that's mainly the reason I remember them being there was that one spot they did. Is it aggression six on August 9th, 2014. And, uh, is it Tracy? Is it Tracy Smothers? No, there's been a no. lot of hillbillies at RWA. Okay. No, I don't remember. <laughs> it's that kind one. of been I a think, lot. I think it was a hillbilly gimmick. Was it Bronco, I could be wrong was though. It Bronco McBride. Oh uh, yeah, that's. Huh? I would have remembered Bronco. I think it would have might have been somebody a one off maybe. I'm not. Oh positive. my god, aggression six. I think I know which one this is. I think this is the one. Is this not the one that had Matt Hardy on it? You know what? I think it is now that you say that. And uh, Bruce Pritchard was there. Yeah, because they I were think doing... they did a rewards. Or, no, that was a couple months later. They 
did the award ceremony thing. We yeah, did. I think you're right. I think that was. I remember the Matt Hardy show. I remember, I don't know if it was the same one, but I definitely remember the Matt Hardy. Aggression show. Aggression Six was definitely the the one with Matt Hardy. This is the one where, um, God, was that 2014? That seems crazy. Uh, no, it couldn't have been 2014. Hold on a second. Um, but, but this this is maybe 16. Hardy, Matt Hardy versus Ryan Mitchell. No, this was a uh this was um this was a uh it was like a bar rescue thing they were trying to do a premiere oh, yeah. for at the time. Oh so they're we, still that that's the flyer guy still from that, I believe. What's that? The guy that makes the flyers, I believe he is from that. Yeah, still. he started yeah. that. He started with yeah. the ladder for the we still have him. I, I, think, he's, so, and yeah. I think he's in Un- Ingl- Iron Skull Productions, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And he's still in England, so he's never been yep. to one of the shows. So and he's still doing them. So yeah, they, they, great, you know. <laughs> so uh, and and they look good. And I love that his flyers look different than like everybody else in the area too. Uh, uh, so I appreciate that. There's a um, lot of video game uh, parody flyers now. I've noticed recently that seems to be the new trend. Oh, that's always been a thing. Um, I loved. Um, I was a really big fan of when they were at the theater. Rise was really good with the movie parody. Uh, flyers mm-hmm. yeah uh, i believe jesse the mark was the one working on those I, I those were a lot of fun to, to sometimes they got a little weird you know where you, you it didn't look like a wrestling show but you know it, it, but generally they were very very good and very very fun so oh, yeah yeah so i did appreciate that so anyways rwa it's a uh, fall free for all it's going to be this saturday in west newton if you're in the area please come down it's uh it just you can't no matter how much we we do on the video, there's only so much we can do to um, uh, 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 bring that vibe of RWA and being there in the crowd for this because it really is. I, I had a fortune a couple months ago uh, since you know we were crewed there and I happened to be there and I just sat at the DVD table all night and it was just so much fun to be out there and feel the crowd for that kind of, that show and uh, and I really appreciate it because it, literally it, sometimes it definitely it definitely feels like electric in the building sometimes it, absolutely it's a great building like great crowd yeah. I mean, it's so often uh, if I'm a producer in the back, I got the headphones on and I'm hearing through one ear what the crowd's doing. And I literally have to ask, was the crowd hot for this? Because I don't know. I'm trying to yeah. bring them up and I don't know. how. Like, I'm, I'm trying to work on the mix and we don't have a specific person to do that. You know, so I'm like, was the crowd good tonight? They're like, yeah, they were really good. I was like, oh, OK. You know, it, I don't know. I'm not hearing that. I'm not feeling that in that way that the wrestlers are out there around the crowd. So, um, so really, I do the, the, the RWA is, RWA is one of those places where you can't mistake it. <laughs> so, no. uh, kind of thing. So, uh, but no, that's always a, a, a really cool spot. So go check them out RWA live.com for information. And of course, indie wrestling.us will be live on the network, indie wrestling.network and over on the YouTube page for members for ringside members will be live on there. And there will be, we usually do a free preview of a, a match or two as well. And, uh, you guys actually do a couple extra interviews, uh, in, in advance, so, um, yeah, and we'll see if we have a cameraman again. We'll see if another one becomes part of a match somehow. Who knows? Or if the other commentator shows up. If it is another commentator, who knows? <laughs> well, does he still have the purple suit? I hope so. That's what I'm looking for. I kind of don't the- hope so. I'm not going to lie. I kind I kind of hope he don't. Well, if he shows up, it just makes it better if he's in that damn purple suit to me. Okay. So I don't know how Nolan Connors has not. I, I guess he did slap him one time, didn't he? Am I, am I not mistaken on that? Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. So many people be... have slapped Tony at this point. I've yeah. lost count. That's true. That's true. That is true. The <laughs> slap count. We'll do. You know, hey, hey, you know what? I, you know, hey, RWA Sports Media needs to do some side uh, shots about uh, any counters on how many times we've given up one time for J Rock, how many times Tony Kincaid's been slapped. Um, that is a bad idea. Um, you know, how many times... Uh, uh, it's uh, like that drinking game where you watch something and be like, hey, every, take a drink oh every God. time Tony gets slapped. Can we put together an RWA drinking game? Because <laughs> take a drink between... every time you see Dr. Feelbad on the outside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> every time... Every time... Every time... <laughs> Watch the Rumble. How many times did uh, Doctor Feelbad book somebody that was just got eliminated by walking up to them mm-hmm. while they're on the floor, <laughs> just shaking their hand? <laughs> oh my God, that was a story. That was a wonderful story I got to hear from that show. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, like no, I, I won't say who. Maybe I will on Patreon. But apparently, uh, somebody got eliminated and he walked right up to them while they're still like on the ground, like recovering. And it was like, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, right? I heard I'm the really same like, story. <laughs> you want to be you want a regular job here 
and uh it was it was great it was great and we know there's a lot of new faces that popped up in the brumble so uh you never know who's going to be coming back i guess you will soon uh uh if all things work out so anyways Cool. Very cool. Uh, check that out. And uh, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back uh, and see what's going on with AEW. Uh, I know they're leading up for their new Wrestle Dream, and there's a lot of things with uh, white t-shirts and plastic bags uh, that we got to figure out in the fallout from last week's pay-per-view. So we'll get that. We'll be right back in a couple minutes for you after this. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like to discuss from an LGBTQ lens? If so, A Gay and His Envy is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to A Gay and His Envy on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Wrestling Mayhem Show. Sorg here in the Sorgatron Media Studios. The dog went home, and uh, and uh, but we do have Timothy Titan is still here. RWA Sports Media. Oops, I, I bumped that thing over there. Uh, I got the zoomy zooms up, and also the Riz is here as well. And he's still he's been sorry. reading us reviews on the break for Money Plane. <laughs> oh, I love it. I Some love of these it. critics have like 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 you mentioned have just. Too many words for yeah, yeah. I don't, it's a fucking horrible. You know movie. what you don't have with pro wrestling fandom reviews with too many words. Okay. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Was, yeah, you do. Sork. Man, I feel like I I, I gave shout outs to like two people that were on PWI last week when I was doing the clips, and I mm. and like I realized there's like a ton of other people that I never even mentioned, but I also didn't read it to know who else was. Yeah, on we there. didn't. It like, was literally that, whoever. Is the entire list out now? Um, I think it's been out, but you know, it's it was digital or physical form somewhere because people are screen capping it. So I don't know. I, I might try to get a physical copy. I like to try to, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, why don't my Ninja Turtles comic up here? Sorry, I'm playing in Hoopa. <laughs> so, anyways, this is Riz is going to be the next one. Oh yeah. Well, uh, Riz is backstage, so I think Riz yeah. Is <coughs> yeah. No. We don't have this problem other places. Like it's RWA, we have this problem with everybody being accosted in one way or I another. I mean, there was that one time where Noir Christian Noir kind of wanted to fight me. Yeah, but he's his own animal, man. Yeah, you can't that's you true. can't blame that's that on the promotion. Noir, though, let's yeah, that doesn't mean much. You know, <laughs> it's his own gravity. Ah, I remember it this time. Ooh, I found I found the entire list. A PWI. Oh, okay. yeah. All right, all right. Well, we can play with that later, maybe. Anyways, in the meantime, AEW did stuff last week. Uh, <laughs> um, no, actually, but I yeah, I caught up with things. Man, I do have to say, Collision is turning into a B slash C show more and more as they go here. It feels, you know, I don't know. I I, I think it is because they're I, I think they're filming it along with Dynamite, and I think the crowd is just worn out by then. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in general. But uh, I, yeah, and I I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means for the for, you know. I'm still I'm still here, and I'll watch it, and 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 I'm down for it. Um, but I'm watching Rampage from this past week, and they're setting up for a um like like they're they're setting up for some uh uh you know RWA tag team matches and everything like that. And and or, sorry ROH, excuse me, jeez, uh, Ring of Honor <laughs> tag team matches and stuff. And they're <laughs> talking about like let's do a fight without honor and all this. Is like I want. And I know this is not how TV deals work, and we, I think we talked about last week how supposedly there might be a, um, a, a deal with Fox, that AEW might be coming over for the Shockwave uh, that they trademarked uh, recently. That is purely speculation on this part, by the way. Um, but I keep watching Rampage, and, and it's got the vibes. I kind of wish it would go straight Ring of Honor. But I also understand that they're not going to probably – do something without the AEW brand on TV because that's the value right now, right? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, but that's kind of my vibe there. Um, I mean, do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> I don't know if you guys are watching those shows or not. Uh, I mean, Dynamite seems to be definitely the A show you need to watch to know what's going on. Um, but there, there, there are some interesting matches happening here and there. It's I, I watch more clips. I find myself more, more watching like highlights and stuff. Like, there's nothing that's keeping my interest to make me watch the entire show. Sure, sure, that's understandable. Mm-hmm. 
So I, I found myself watching highlights videos and stuff more. I really like the um the Briscoe Orange Cassidy uh Kyle O'Reilly team though. I the really like that. Trend. I love and that. EC. Team right Don't there. forget EC. Yeah, Ishii, so. there. I think yeah. Ishii went home though because he hasn't been on for a week or two. So yeah, so he um, wasn't there last last no. match I seen of them. No, but uh, but no, it, it, it's I hate the name. I still absolutely hate the name. I think the conglomeration is the most convoluted name, but also it kind of works with that crew. Right? If you look at the, I like it because of their shirts. Their shirt looks like somebody took a bunch of letters out of a magazine, put them onto a piece of paper, mm -hmm. and then copied it. I think I have a Chicago tourist shirt shirt with the same kind of style to it <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me i mean in wrestling at this point it's make your version of something else so. oh, absolutely absolutely so and actually that would make sense this is pro wrestling tees right so yeah they probably yeah. Really mm -hmm. saw that out on the pier where i bought mine and says oh we can do a thing with conglomeration like that but it's more letters <laughs> so let's make a different lay you know kind of deal so um no uh yeah no but that's the thing like in the long, like we've randomly brought back i know people are gonna piss on this but we randomly brought back the um the chris jericho and orange cassidy feud about the jack seven thousand jacket seven thousand dollar jacket from like three or four years ago like and resurrected this feud over it um and Again, I think we were talking about a lot last week about things. Don't tell me they're not doing long-term storytelling and remembering stuff like this, right? Um, so, so it, again, it's fun. It's a different thing. It's a, it's, it's. I want to see more matches. Uh, I'm here to see what you know a, a conduct to call somebody a bitch or flip off the crowd. I'm here for uh, uh, the women's wrestling that does happen on there. See what um, Ryan May. I'm loving the Nigel McGinnis reveal um, mm -hmm. that we're leading into that. We're finally getting something out of that. Uh, so they did ask him, uh, Tony, I think, asked him if Raya May's kiss is what got him into the ring at Wembley Stadium and, uh, and, and, and referenced how the internet thinks that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, again, it's still just a fun place to watch wrestling. And, and again, why, we've always, and again, I'll, I'll say that differentiated that we do say we watch WWE to watch a good show. We watch AEW to watch good wrestling and both. I was gonna are, say yeah, and both. If you want important. spots, that's the place to go. If yeah. you're a spot monkey, that's the place to watch. Spot, not even just spot monkeys, just just matches, right? Yeah. Matches that ca matches that mostly, for the most part, keep your attention. Mm -hmm. um, they definitely have some matchups that I want to see. Like I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to see Hologram versus Ricochet. Right. 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 You're more, I would love uh, okay. To see that. This is this is the thing. I, 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 Tim, I always had a thing on show where I want I am a fan of Shinsuke Nakamura. This is when things were kind of eh with a WWE a few years ago, right? Okay, and I yeah. was like, I love Shinsuke Nakamura. I want Shinsuke Nakamura on my TV. But based on what's happening in WWE, I don't care what's happening with Shinsuke Nakamura has been my my thing. Rick, Mine is Oscar. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh. Uh. Ricochet could be in that boat too. I like Ricochet. I've seen Ricochet do amazing things on a Lucha Underground or in New Japan or other shows, right? Yeah. PWG, whatever, right? Uh, I've seen the clips. I've seen the the memes. I've seen the you know the the highlights and and the matches. And and while I, there was definitely some great stuff he did at WWE, it's like okay, you're only going so much being that style, right? He can go and do. They can put him and Osprey in a ring you know maybe at a Wembley <laughs> you know what I mean um you know we did you know and have that crazy indie quote-unquote super indie if you will New Japan you know crazy match yeah, the, a gymnastics match yes mm -hmm. and 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 there is a place for that just like there's a place for some people for deathmatch wrestling hardcore wrestling uh um go to move <laughs> wrestling you know uh wrestling like fans that. will DD, do one ddt pro you know yeah. yeah wrestling fans won't do one thing and no. that is not yuck somebody else's yum you know what i appreciate this week mjf was uh being interviewed i love i am a fan of mjf's no bullshit interviews he's got because somebody's like um God, this is a, this is the equivalent of Biden put on a Trump hat last week. Not to get political, but but it's kind of the same thing. MJF's on there, and they're, and he's like, "Yeah, I watched the other product." I'm like, "Oh, you, you, you're watching." He's like, "He's like, what fucking world are we in?" 
where we're all wrestlers and don't want to see what the other guys are doing and 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 want to know and want to get better and want to see how people that are better than you are getting there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like and research. Like, when, and, and that's like that, that. This this and I get time and everything like that. But it does blow my mind <clears throat> when somebody says I don't want to watch WWE and you're a wrestler, right? On any level, you know I don't want to watch this. I don't want to watch this. If you are not watching at least a little bit of a little bit of everything, you know what I mean? Why is why people keep my wife had this last week this happens up every once in a while how i will go produce a show go home and put on whatever that show was and try to catch up on it and she's like how how can you watch all this and it's like like, it's twofold for me it's like well one i know that guy (laughs) you know know, we like we were we worked with that guy last week you remember that guy you're a fan of that referee from that show uh you know kind of thing but also it is like i want to be better at what I do, I don't watch football. But if I'm at Red Robin and they got a football game on, I'm looking at the screen because I want to see what they're doing. Camera angles, even. Even if you're just looking at camera angles. Angles, and, graphics, yeah. you know, presentation. It's all so important. If there's something, the debate <laughs> last week, you know. Okay, how do they present this? Okay, that, that's that, that's that. Like, what if we mm-hmm. do, hypothetically, like we did last year, a themed show where it was called a world series and we had scoreboard in the corner and Riz and Missy put together this amazing package in the system. And that had the scoreboard and everything and everybody loved it. That kind Mm -hmm. of presentation, right? Uh, How do you do, because I've had to do this once. How do I take the, you know, we had a ring of honor, pure rules match. Uh, Um, Oh, what's his name? Uh, the with the guy uh, with the uh, the athletes, the premier athletes, um, Josh Woods, right? Oh, uh, he was the champion against Shane, and I was like, I'm doing the graphics package for this. <laughs> you know, we just did a sixty man a sixty minute Iron Man match, and I was like, Hey, WWE did it this this format. And I want I want to kind of mimic that because that's what people have seen lately, right? So, and again, I'm always a fan of. I want to bring I want to bring the indie wrestling close to what you're used to so you give it a chance you know what I mean? yeah if it's presented the same then it's, it's like it's, yeah it's not a bad presentation i i completely get what you're saying it's like you're, you're more you're more willing to accept something that's presented in a good way exactly that's always been the philosophy but also you know again it's like that understanding that i'm very 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 interested in all these new camera angles that everybody's using right and again, they got way more assets and, cam- and cameras. To like, I was like, okay, well, how can I do that with two camera guys? <laughs> I'm looking into a, I'm looking into a drone right now that you wear a bracelet and the drone flies around and captures you for yes. refs to wear. Yes. Oh, so the I ref could the, wear it. I love the, the ref, one of the wrestlers, something like that. You can imagine it comes yeah. out, you know, and it would just hover around the ring the whole time. Like you can set it to how far you want it to be away from the bracelet. If they, we don't have Tad Jarvis do that for a match, I don't know what we're doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the big social media guy, right? Uh huh. You know, can we just like, like I, oh, I, what happened, Riz? I think you were part of this when everybody saw that that uh, uh, ref cam on the ear at SummerSlam, mm. and I'm in the stand, so I didn't catch what was happening until until like they fucked it up on the screen. And yep. uh, in the first match, and I was, and I, and and immediately I get a link from somebody that sends me like this thing's eighty dollars. Again, that was me. Yeah, it, it was all Riz. It was like I was like Riz, why are you encouraging this right now? Because <laughs> this is, you know, this is a problem. Um, but uh, yeah, and obviously theirs is going to be more expensive than what we had because uh, it's actually tied in and seemed pretty in sync, you know. So <laughs> like I was interested in that. But man, it, but it's also interesting to see what things they still can't get right to me like you know what got me on raw huh I, they had all them intros where everybody's coming walking in cm punk gets out of his car and never shut the door and walked in who <laughs> walks away from their car and doesn't shut the damn door man and it's so good at the details lately and they missed that one right yeah uh, like you he but couldn't also, just like that's how shut it real quick you can also sell that's how distraught he was over drew and the hell in the cell mm-hmm. and the gravity of the situation right you haven't yeah. been stressed down and just left your car open you know walking out and be like oh shit that's right right you know kind of thing you know like like that's that's kind of relatable but but even things like they'll use you know we saw these with the corner cameras all the time when they use them at AEW. 
now they're the PTZs that are the top down. And then I'll say this, and I'm going to ruin this for you guys, because you probably never noticed this, and I do. Um, notice, look at the ring mat, and notice what color it is. <laughs> it's a different shade of white, bluish, gray, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's the color. The color doesn't match because. Frankly, it's a different camera. Most of the cameras you're going to have around wrestling mm-hmm. are relatively the same camera in every position or at least high enough level of a camera that you can match those. And then yeah. you go to, okay, now we're going to put this one over here and you know, and, and it's like a PTZ. It's going to be, it's just not going to match at all. Um, Cause that's, you can't hang a giant production camera from yeah. the ceiling most of the time. Um, so, so yeah, so that's, that's one of those things. Hey, throw a GoPro in the corner. Great. It's not going to look like the rest of it. You know what I mean? Nah. Um, and, and it's hard to do that live. Um, we use multiple cameras when we do highlights for post for our clients, uh, GoPros, cell phones, and big 4k cameras. And, but we throw filters over it. So it kind of mushes all that. <laughs> See, I, learned, I learned about that at the last show because I do two cameras and one of them kept fogging up because of how hot it was, but the other one yep. was fine. Yep. So like the one angle would be fine and then it would just get blurry suddenly when it fogged up. Yep. I, I noticed that in one of those. I think you were doing like an outtake one or something and, and I saw that. So and, and it's yeah. going to happen, but you, you, know, you learn to do that. You learn to deal with it. Right. And and how to how to kind of manage that. And then also like using like maybe a cell phone and a handy camera or something. Right. And they're not going to match entirely. You know, yeah, yeah. But sometimes that can be purposeful. Um, I remember watching. It was a uh, when they did a special on JBL when they were interviewing him. It was a network special, and I'm watching this, and they got like three cameras on the guy. And he's got like some of them have the soft focus, some of them are regular, you know, kind of thing. And I was just like, the colors are so different on this. And I was like, okay, that's intentional and that's okay, right? Yeah. So if I'm sitting down, I was like, well, I have this camera and this camera, but I can make that the style you know, is, you know, again, it's kind of like a, everything doesn't have to be perfect kind of thing. I, I, yeah, talk, yeah. I talk way too much video production on this wrestling show, <laughs> uh, probably kind of thing. But this is, if I'm just like gazing off into the distance, this is what's going through my head. If oh, you, yeah. Because oh, yeah. I know this this is a thing. And if people are asking if I'm okay, it's like, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm literally trying to uh, organize the production and the look and style and how we're going to handle this thing two months from now. <laughs> I say, well, me and you are not going to be good together because I literally spend the majority of my day editing YouTube videos for other people. So well, there you go. You know, that, that's uh, that, that's it. You know, and and that's yeah. I mean, I'm literally, <laughs> yeah, I'm literally posting videos every day at this point for these podcasts and and other things and getting stuff ready for clients. So yeah, it's it's. But that's it, you know. Um, I I think that if you're going to be good at something, you know, I, there's a somebody I listen to online that says you got to be a fan of the process. You mm-hmm. know, I would hope, and I don't know if if this is a thing, but like uh, for me, I love the setup, I love the teardown, I love the show show itself, I love doing. You know, and and I got to think about wrestlers. A lot of times they're rolling in, setting up the ring, doing the show, and then you know, help them with tear down. Right. Yeah. Ideally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so that is the process. Um, I, I, I hope, I hope the best of them enjoy putting the ring together. Cause that's your, you're building like this idea that you build your office, perform, do your job and then tear down the office and move it away has been like, kind of like, a motivational thing for me in the last few years. So See, I've always tried to, whenever I was on shows, I always tried to be there more for the fact of like, I knew it was getting put together right. Even, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I want to yeah. be there to watch it get put together because I'm trusting that ring tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You would know exactly what you're getting into. Right. And, yeah. and if you're part of turning the screws then you're, you're a part of making sure that is okay for you. Uh, yeah. when that happens. So, um, obviously as you get into bigger shows, that's not, all, I, I, can, I don't know, man. Like, you know, we're watching all the new Japan guys putting rings together and stuff. Right. It's just, um, kind of depends. Right. I mean, it ain't going to put itself together. Somebody got to do it. Absolutely. So. so anyways, so good stuff there. Um, Hey, we're going to, Hey, let's give a shout out. You guys weren't here, but I gotta, you know, as, uh, as I stated, it's the perfect pepperoni pizza for, Pups that love puppy pepperoni <laughs> for puppy power. 
I, I I lured a dog into my abode with the pepperoni today. <laughs> Actually, it mostly followed me. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to leave you out here. There's literally a train over there uh, 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 20 feet from our studio. So I want to make sure you're safe, and we're going to find you a home. Thank you, social media, again uh, for that. It took the duration of, uh, let's see, it was about 5.15, and I think I found the dog walking back with the uh, our, our friends at Slice. Uh, from our friends at Slice, and uh, about a block up here. And uh, we found the neighbors, and they took the dog at about uh, 8.20 between shows. Wow. <laughs> so uh, don't say social, social media is shitty, okay? <laughs> you can get some good stuff done when you're focused on it. And you also get some good pizza from our friends at Slice on Broadway. SliceOnBroadway.com, multiple locations around Pittsburgh. The OG, the original, right up the trolley tracks, from this studio in the neighborhood of Beachview of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They've been supporting the Pittsburgh, Perfect, Pittsburgh Podcasting with the Perfect Pepperoni Pizza for well over a decade and a half now, maybe, we're getting up on. So thank you so much for those guys for supporting the show shows on Tuesday night and making sure some of us don't forget to eat or we can save a dog from their own devices. Uh, anyways, thank you so much to them for supporting the show. Guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Who would like to go first? Oh, I thought we were going to say, what did I learn from the show? I learned that if you say impar- apparently in front of anything, that you can get away with just about anything you allegedly, want. Allegedly. 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 That's allegedly. it. Allegedly. Sorry. You failed allegedly. the quiz. <laughs> uh, I learned that Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed shouldn't be in the same room together. Oh, my God. <laughs> because they are going to destroy everything they come in I contact love- with. They threw a fan. <laughs> That I that was good. That was a very good. I, I'd be lying if I said I didn't pop for that. Oh my gosh, that is the best thing I've seen since Keith Lee um, yeeted uh, uh, Adam Cole into the crowd with a tackle. Oh yeah, yep, off right. that mm-hmm. off his uh, press thing where he pressed him up over the top, yep, over the ropes. No, 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 no. He it was a pounce. It was that shoulder tackle. Oh, okay, remember? Yeah. And he, remember yeah, they, he would hit him with that, and they go flying. They had a okay. slight ramp at, our, at NXT, and it just sailed him up over the little bit of the barrier and into the crowd. You know, obviously. Uh, okay, yeah, I know what you're plants, talking about. But, um, yeah, no, absolutely, dude. That was I, I saw a thing about it about like Triple H knows how to film a monster movie, and uh, and <laughs> I saw and I, so I watched the full thing, and I loved it. it. wasn't even a match. It was just like the first thing they did. Like, what did he? He went. He into went. The he tur- chased him, and they popped the turn pop turnbuckle off immediately. Like mm-hmm. immediately, the destruction started with that top turnbuckle. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, they had me. They had me right away. I, I love it. I love what they're doing there. And the thing is, they're doing this stuff, and they're not even pay per view matches. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I love the level because they're doing so few things on the pay per view these days. Right? I was surprised yeah. to see. Um, God, was it Damien and Finn? I think is going to be a match of bad blood that actually kind of surprised me because so much of it is like under show, right? Is, is undercard. And, and, yeah. but like you got all of your stuff that says, says up for the pay per view. But if you just want to follow like the Intercontinental title story, like that's week to week. And I think they're having a match next week, right? Yeah, it's uh, Jay versus Braun. There, there's another yeah. thing I learned. If your name is Braun, because it's Braun Strowman, Bronson Reed, and Braun Breaker. If your name is Braun in WWE, you're doing good things. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That was, that's been some tremendous stuff. Riz, what did you learn from wrestling this week? In chat, Riz, we're going to take a line, uh, a roll by you. And uh, somebody says, it's Vader time over on the TikTok. Say, so, how's it going out there? Oh, wait, maybe that's their name. Is it's, Va- it's time, it's time, it's Vader time. <laughs> okay. It could be it. Sorry, I highlighted, so I thought it was the comment. Uh, anyways, um, Riz, what did you learn from wrestling I this learned week? the 500 wrestlers that are on here. <laughs> Did you memorize them all? No, not not really. Hey, Who's three hundred fifty-two? Three hundred fifty-two. Is that what you said? Yes. It was, uh, it was a memorization test, but okay. Yeah. No, it's not. Uh, oh, it's oh Ricky Starks. Holy shit! Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Two twenty-two. Uh, he, he dropped three hundred and nine places. What was it? <laughs> oh, geez, that's that's two twenty-two. Who's two twenty-two? Two two two, Charlie Evans. All right, let's go Pittsburgh. Four one two. Four one two. I like this game. I I did see yeah. that. Let me see. Uh oh, Journey for two. There you go. Okay. Okay. I like this game. Uh, yeah. there is also a wrestler on here, number four oh nine, that I kind of want to see. I've never heard of him before. His name is his name is Neil Diamond Cutter. 
oh, I know who that is actually. <laughs> I've seen like I've never seen one of his matches, but I've seen him on flyers. I feel like I've definitely. Heard this. I feel like, like I've heard about this. And I, I like how five hundred number five hundred is just memes. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's it, it's memes. It's five hundred is memes, and it and the picture that they provided. I think they even provided it on the PWI five hundred mm-hmm. was a picture of blue cane. Oh, nice. Okay. But they just lumped every meme character together in one little <laughs> oh, one little uh, 500. Love it. Um from the uh, maybe this is what she learned uh from the chat room. WB has made one of the most hated wrestlers of the area into the most loved. I think this is Ricky from SmackDown that was Kevin Owens' original partner. When mm-hmm. Randy Randy Orton supposedly was late, um, oh, he, he was. In, he, did you hear he was on the bus? Uh, yeah, I saw the video where they invited him onto Randy's bus <laughs> afterwards. No, not Randy's bus. What? Rob's bus. Rob. Rob, Rob Van, Van Dam's Van Dam. bus. Oh, I thought Rob yeah. Van Dam was on Ro- uh, Randy's bus. Or I thought, I thought no, he has his own bus. I think. Rob has his own bus. Rob had his own bus. I think. Why does Rob Van Dam have a bus? Does he just why generally you, have a why bus? Why do you think why do you think Rob Van Dam has his own bus, Sorg? I'm just gonna leave that there then. Okay. Uh um, that's, that's a hot bus, Sorg. I learned He's gotta be on a couple no fly oh, lists. This is yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. You can't fly. Can't leave the country. Can't um <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. This is actually what Tina learned. Uh, wrestling is for everyone. Having that energy, being so hyped for SmackDown with a new theme from Megan Thee Stallion, seeing all different kids in the crowd in the uh, in the arena, uh, kind of brought a tear to my eye. Exhausted from the gatekeeper behavior of just toxic POS fans on social media lately. That's why we have mm-hmm. this show. That's why we have MGF saying, "Hey, I watched the other guys." Uh huh. You know, I mean, completely. So that's why the indie wrestling board. Uh, the Indie wrestling boards are no longer a thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, also, like, I mean, technically it's Twitter, but, you know, it's, it's, it's become Twitter. And the only reason that board's not a thing is that guy literally passed away. And so nobody, I was going to say thing. that. I think the guy that ran it died. Yeah. yeah so, oh, oh. Uh, thanks for that. Um, yeah. But, uh, but I don't even know who it was. I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm just like <laughs> the guy, you know. <laughs> hey, Rich, just out of curiosity, who's the highest ranked Pittsburgh wrestler? Ooh. Oh, well, I might have. That'll take some time. Let's give him some a minute on yep. that. That might give me some. T- so, are we talking about like current indie wrestlers from Pittsburgh? I would like, say indie yeah. wrestling, or just I would say indie because I imagine Lee Moriarty by default is going to be the highest ranked. Or Thea, Ooh. I guess. I guess Thea could technically, huh? Uh, Thea, Thea could be, and I think Lee won that belt after the so, deadline. Maybe uh, Thea won't be on here. Hmm. Because, like I mentioned last time, uh, they Women's, only count yeah. uh, the the women who are wrestling intergen- inter- intergender matches. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Keep going. Another random thought. There's never been a female WWE movie star. Uh, Becky Lynch was in something. Sasha yeah, Banks. Something, but... Sasha Banks has been in Mandalorian. Oh yeah, okay. She would be the closest. You're right. Yeah. Um. And mm. uh, da, 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 da. man, I yeah, it's like like they had even they like had Sable summer... wasn't Sunny wasn't. I'm trying no, to think of all like summer, the big Summer Ray. Summer Ray is there any summer summer? Yeah, summer... but I don't think she started. Doing she was that a co like star right? on, on on the Marine. Yeah. Um. I think oh the yeah, she was still in that. Still yeah, because the shows. Miz was in that too, right? I, I believe the Miz was in the Marine also. Yeah, yeah, no, nobody else really kind of rolled out from there, did they? No, nah, because with that era, you would think Sable. Uh huh. Because she's still obvious. It seems like she has the decent head like, on her shoulders, unlike Sunny. I, 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 the Hollywood's not good with ladies. No, you know what I mean. And just I in mean, general, either. Can you That's remember the love interest from any Mission Impossible movie and any other movie, for instance? Right? Like no. they're not. You know, I I feel like I feel like Hollywood ladies are unless they get in the drama are are almost more throwaway than 
two thousands women's wrestlers. That's valid. Because watching that trailer for the um the killing game, I had no idea who the no female fucking love idea. No idea. <laughs> no idea who she was. No. Sometimes you'll get somebody like, you know, um uh the the one that played uh, uh Mantis in, in Guardians and things like that. You know, um, the one that's uh, uh, from the one that's in Shang Chi, Shang Chi that did uh, everything, uh, everything everywhere all at once. For instance, is really having a moment right now. Um, yeah. But I, they really do seem kind of fleeting, right? Yeah, Megan yeah, Fox really randomly are. came back for de- 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 uh, uh, the the uh, the Transformers. No, no, the St- the Stallone thing, the Expendables. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. C.J. Perry has done some stuff. Mm-hmm. But again, nobody's. She, uh, wasn't she? She was um in some type of actor before WWE, though, right? I know she was a yeah, gymnast. Yeah. Uh, she was in Pitch Perfect, apparently before. That's WWE right. Was a that's thing. right. Yep, yep, that was a big, big, big swing. So, I want to go back to this because <laughs> locally, the highest I think I found is MV. Mm-hmm. Really? Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. But one name that I kind of, I kind of. I'm happy to see on this list where where they are. Um, Max, mm-hmm. fucking Max is at. Uh, let's see where is she where are they at here? It is. Oh, I'm all the way over here. I'm all I'm far away. I think they're in like the they're in the, like the fifties. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like with some names such as, uh. Like you mean Joe Hendry, Impaler? yeah, Maxi and Oh, yeah. they're doing amazing. They're thing. doing amazing. Mm-hmm. Good for like, them. Like in the fifties, you have Joe Hendry, Ron Breaker, Oba Femi, Maxi and nice. wow. Randy Orton, AJ <laughs> Styles, Claudio, Kevin Owens, and Jack Perry. Can we just throw That's all of them in a match perfect. with Max? Please, because that sounds like a baller fucking match to begin with. Just, so. oh, I, I would love to see Oba Femi versus Max. I, I'm always fascinated I, because I've been watching here and there a little bit of more NWA, trying to get more familiar with it. Plus, they're getting to the point where, uh, I, and I'll throw that mention out right now. Then, uh, Pretty Boy Smooth is debuting on NWA Power as of today on the CW app, which is free mm-hmm. for you guys to watch. Um, they're showing the Back to the oh. Territories show from, so it's in a high school gymnasium, but that's the point. Okay. That's, like, like oh, yeah. remember that's yeah. the aesthetic they're going for on this one. Yeah. So. I was wrong. Pretty Boy Smooth is 362. So okay. he is ahead of. So Pretty Boy okay. is not Pittsburgh, but is Western Pennsylvania. So we will. Yeah. Uh, we'll count big it. in the area. So you know. Um, if if, honestly, if big, companies can if if companies can do it, Sorg, we can do it. Wrestlers can do it. Okay. They're Pittsburgh. They're Pittsburgh based. That's right. Pittsburgh esque based. Um, people that have been live in this studio, for instance, yeah. is a good good thing. Yeah, who's the top person who's been live in the studio? That would be Pretty Boy Smooth, probably. Um Oh, in the studio, yes. In the studio. Unless uh I can't think of anybody else that would be yeah. So I and I want to point out uh number three nine or three oh seven is Rhino. Oh, okay. I learned this week a friend of the show that got a Legends contract. Did you see this? Riz. Ooh. Armando Alejandro Estrada. I can't roll. Okay, it. yes. I, I, I did I did hear about rumors that I, I heard like I heard Armando got it. Uh who else? Victoria got it. Good. Yeah, yeah. No, she um, got it. Yeah, yeah. She's awesome. And I, I've also heard like there's like slight rumors that Armando is going to be somebody's Heisman. Yeah, I, I, I read this also. I'm ex- okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I'm here for it. Um, I was really sad to see. All the peg warmers at Target yesterday were rosies. Was, yeah, me too. There was like six or eight of them. Mine too. The new I was this close by the new Britt Baker one that has the um the heart I'm, uh, Owen Hart belt. I'm still upset over them with how they rendered a uh, uh, fucking Big Boss Man's one. Oh really? Uh, from Bully Big Big Bubba. 
Big Bubba. His his one does not look anything yeah, like him. Yeah, that one's rough. The Daniel Bryan one looks rough from AEW. So, you know, ah, uh, yeah, it, it's it, it gets it gets funky. You know, trying to do real people. Jacqueline got it as well. Jackie? Oh, Jacqueline got it. Good. Yes. Lee. Um, put, put Victoria in the Hall of Fame already. I know, right? I know, right? Uh, I saw Danny Mose on a show with Victoria here coming up too. So, um, I'm sure I'm sure she's run into her before. Uh, knowing how they're freaking everywhere doing poolside photos with all of her belts i see you danny mo yeah uh, <laughs> so uh living the dream doing jcw shows good for them good for them i i know i know facade is just over the moon working just doing like random promo videos with violent J. holy shit that, <laughs> that kid from the icp crowd oh my god oh yeah i imagine um, he'd just be rolling with this i, I love so it so good for him rogue I, I, I think i got your name now it's rogue xx like it's it's spelled with a three uh but they mentioned that they didn't want to bring it up but ronda rousey has been in films as well yeah uh, I, uh, I see that was hmm. it, that's a such a on the line one because yeah because she, she, did it before. she didn't get famous from wwe i yeah. mean that's like that's like she's i feel like she's in the same boat as like gina carano on a couple of lines actually um and, and it's but, not like she was good in those no but it was like but well they they had they had a couple of uh uh oh god who is the ice man um not bellator uh but he was in in those expendable chuck, uh, liddell, chuck, liddell. Yeah, chuck liddell chuck liddell thank you like yeah like, there's always been a thing like just like the like especially like an action film like that bringing in like a a ufc guy or something like that like i i think that's but also even they're not doing i mean even even there even her um performance in uh the moral combat games as oh, right. sonya blade oh yeah. yeah was kind of eh. mm-hmm. but john says so peacekeeper is pretty amazing game. she was in that legends game that all people from that what's that like oh. broken legends or something i can't think of what it's called oh, like right. every yeah yeah oh league was it league no no, was, no. Was, like no, no. it's a mobile game that every yeah. single youtube video you watch has a Ad Raid Warfare Shadow Warfare. Legends. Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's it. This She's is why I pay for YouTube too. Premium. Because <laughs> I I'm okay not knowing this stuff because it's not shit I want. So. <laughs> that's what that's what we're here for. Tim so. Titan, it's been a pleasure having you on here and having a conversation with you. You're back. It's been amazing. I, I appreciate you having me. Thank you very much. Anytime. Welcome back anytime. Hope your other computer works this time. Next time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened, man. It didn't like my microphone. Zoom gets wild. Zoom gets wild. Um, but we got we got to make sure we uh, do something about the product placement in the back uh, the background. What do I got? Oh, my pampers. I, yeah, pampers. you're like displaying <laughs> pampers. I just noticed. I'm like, yo, yo, stop yeah. slipping the sponsorships in. <laughs> this, is a, this is what it looks like. This is what the background at a three year old's house looks like. Yeah, so. exactly. So, <laughs> anyways, thank you so much. Check out RWA uh, again. RWA Live.com for ticket info, or you can see it streaming at Indie Wrestling US outlets as well. Thursday night fights uh, is this Thursday. Uh, there'll be a lot of fun happening there. Uh, come out live if you're in the new Ken area, eight o'clock PM Eastern time. And, uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, stay tuned if you're on the live stream, uh, for Patreon. And of course that'll be up in the feed here, uh, shortly as well. Uh, thank you everybody that's, uh, tuned in supporting the show and everything. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.